Uh, this is a stable lock uh, SI4031. Picked it up relatively cheap. Well, next to nothing basically. Um, it's got numerous faults on it. Um, if we do the um, revisions, we can see what we've actually got installed. Um, hardware revisions, that is. Um, and then we're from here, we can run a self check. If I run the self check, we have some nice flashy lights. Just try some through. They all seem to be working okay. And then we can run the self check. So if you run the self check, Okay, so we've got some failed. We've got the IF unit failed, the mod generator I failed, and the FM modulator failed. Um, duplex related test failed. Now, I've been told that um, the common cause for failures on these units are age related uh, capacitors that dry out or leak, uh, they're 10 microfarad in value, they're surface mount values, and the recommended fix. Um, is basically to replace every single one of them. Um, it's a very long winded job by the look of it, but it's something I'm gonna to have to do, I think. Um, you can't just visually look them because apparently they dry out internally. Um, if the signs of any leakage, the PCB will be damaged. Uh, there are some other tests we can do. We can check the supply vault rails. Uh, we can check the rear 10 megahertz output, see if that's correct. Um, so I'll run through those tests, uh, but one of the main issues I've got is when I'm testing, um, when I put a uh, say 100 meg uh, 0 dB signal through the RF attenuator block, um, I should read 50 dB output, but I'm not, um, I'm sort of losing quite a dB, so it looks like one of the attenuator pads um, has gone funny so I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look at the fixing that first um, and I'll just show you where that is the RF attenuator block can be found in the base um, you're gonna have to remove the covers and this is it basically uh, there's a 20 dB a 30 dB another 30 dB and a 20 dB attenuator um, when the, the circuit is unenergized uh, the signal path um, only goes through the 30 dB and the 20 dB attenuator so whatever you put in you're going to lose 50 dB um, I'm losing more than that, a hell of a lot more and um, I'm thinking it's the 20 dB attenuator pad uh, This is the circuit diagram for the RF attenuator block um, effectively what I'm doing, I'm shoving in shoving in, I suppose is the word uh, 100 meg at 0 dB uh, the path basically follows this route um, through these so it's avoiding B5 it's avoiding B4 but then it flows through B3 which is a 30 dB attenuator and then on to B2 which is a 20 dB attenuator um, then the output obviously is straight out where I'm measuring it on the spectrum analyzer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this out. Um, there's only a couple of screws on the side here. Um, you've got to take this, this cover off here. Um, this part removes quite easily. Um, once you remove these screws and just drop through and this will just come out with the heat sink on it. Remove the RF attenuator, um, part number 226. 031S and what I'm basically doing is I'm feeding in I don't know if you can see that down there um, 100 meg at 0 dB and I'm recording the output on my spectrum analyzer if I uh, engage the switch contacts from relay uh, 2 and 3 which effectively removes the all the attenuation uh, in, from the input to the output um, 
I'm speeding in that um, one meg, oh sorry, 100 meg at 0 dB, so I should roughly get the same out. Um, and that's what I'm getting, so I am getting actually, to ignore the noise on there, I've got some really bad leads, but they're, they're proving a point anyway. So going straight through, uh, based on the circuit diagram, there should be, um, let's have a quick look, I'll zoom in on that for you, the only two relays energy, well, um, the only path where it goes through any form of um, DB attenuation is through B3 and B2, uh, which should amount to seven, sorry about that, should amount to minus 50 dB on the output, but I'm getting more like minus 70. Now, I can manually um, operate these, I'm not energising them with power, I don't want to do any damage, but I can actually, if I press on the end, the cap there, you can energise the relay, so to speak, or bring the contacts in. And what I've just done there is I've brought in B2, I've closed it, so it's now open, so it's now, sorry, closed circuit, so the, the 20 dB attenuator is that circuit, and I should be getting minus 30 dB, which is roughly what I'm getting, no problem whatsoever. Okay, so now if we look at uh, relay 3 on B3, uh, if we energise that one, we should now get uh, a minus 20 dB drop, but we're actually getting a minus 40. Now that's implying to me now that the uh, the minus 20 dB B2 attenuator is faulty. Um, it's losing 20 dB somewhere. Um, so I think we're going to have to open it up and have a look inside. I thought I'd show you a quick look inside the attenuator unit. Let um, me remove the screws basically. And oh, it looks a bit Lego-ish, but um, obviously um, when you push on the plunger on the end of the relay, which would normally be energised um, when required, you can see it's basically just moving forward. And I presume there's contacts underneath the, the red block, so uh, I'll have a look. But in my case, this here seems to be my issue. Um, it should be giving me a minus 20, it's giving me a minus 40. I've uh, taken out the um, relay plunger in question, and it seems to be this one. As you can see, there is a bit of a flash mark on it there, and if I can zoom into there, it looks like it's had a little bit of damage and as you can see on there there seems to be a little bit of a flash mark so yeah we've definitely got a problem there now this is our repair this is um, basically a 20 db attenuator it's actually about 19.6 or something like that actually but um, the true value should be something like 41 point something but I haven't got those so um, it'll be close enough anyway, so that's all we need to do. So we've got two 39 ohm resistors and a 10 ohm shunt resistor to deck. Um, the the original part, I cannot find anything that looks um, similar or anything that's cost effective anyway. So uh, this is the cheapest option. Um, it's obviously nowhere near the right power rating, but for uh, my sort of testing, it'll do fine to be honest. So. Um, so what I've done, I've, I've put it all back together, um, and uh, as you can see it's here, it's all back together now, I'm feeding in, um, basically, what have we got there, uh, 100 meg at 0 dB. Right, the path through the relays um, is as it should be, all the attenuator pads, uh, we've got roughly minus 50 dB, um, I've got losses due to my leads. But if I now uh, engage S2 and S3, which will take out the attenuators, um, we should get as close to 0 dB as possible. Bit in a second. There you go. Um, we're showing about minus 1.3, but that's probably losses in my leads, to be honest. 
So yeah, it seems to be working okay now. The attenuator block seems to be fixed. Um, the uh, power rating of the resistors is probably slightly low, so I'll just have to be a little bit more cautious with that. But until something turns up on uh, eBay or somewhere, then I'm really a little bit stuck, to be honest.